Hello, uh, welcome to our um, Q&A session around Lord of the Flies and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined today by some really key people who help bring Lord of the Flies from an idea to a realisation. My name is Imogen Kinchin and I'm the Executive Director of The Adventures. Um, I'm joined by three people today and I'd like to go around and just get them to introduce themselves, um, not only what they're doing now but also what their role was in Lord of the Flies. Let's start with Helen. Hi there, um, I'm Helen Prosser and uh, currently I'm uh, project managing uh, an education trial around special educational needs in secondary schools with an organisation called Nason. Um, but when Lord of the Flies was created um, and restaged, I was the producer for Reborn, the charitable uh, education arm of New Adventures. Brilliant, thank you Helen. Uh, James? Hi, I'm James Mackenzie Batman. I'm currently Chief Executive of Eden Court Theatre and Cinema in the Highlands of Scotland. Um, but when uh, in 2014, I was Executive Director of uh, New Adventures and Reborn. Brilliant, thank you. And Alex? Hi, I'm Alex Ringham. I'm the Project Manager for New Adventures. So I look after um, our talent and development community and young people strands alongside our resident artists. When Lord of the Flies was on tour, I was one of the ambassadors. So I worked in the Plymouth venue um, to recruit young people and prepare them for the company to arrive. Amazing, thank you. So I think what's brilliant is we've got um, three diff really different roles that were sort of really key and involved into bringing Lord of the Flies to life. So uh, this week with New Adventures, we've been focusing on Lord of the Flies as part of our look back at our repertoire. Um, so hopefully you've seen some of the content that we've been sharing with you this week. Um, Lord of the Flies is an amazing project and it's one that has continued to give an, an amazing legacy and one that I don't think any of these, uh, the three people I'm joined by would have imagined. Um, we now have five young men who've joined the company as professional dancers in Swan Lake, Romeo and Juliet and Red Shoes and that really is a testament to the project. So um, it would be great to get a real sense of how it all began. Um, Helen, would you kick us all off um, by just sort of saying where the idea came from? Um, it started in Glasgow in 2011 and it was a partnership, wasn't it? So it'd be great for you to tell us a little bit more about how the project began. It was. Um, Reborn was pretty new at the time. Um, we'd only really just sort of started operating. Uh, and it was Glasgow Theatres that came to us. Um, Alison Cowan uh, had got some money for from Creative Scotland to develop an idea around um, dance opportunities for boys, particularly for, for males, which really appealed to Matthew, um, I think. And um, we didn't know what it would be, uh, particularly at that point, but there was money to specifically work in an area of Western Bartonshire, which was a very, a very kind of poor area, a real mix of kind of urban and rural and quite socially and economically mixed. Uh, so it was a kind of partnership between New Adventures, the theatres, um, the Glasgow theatres and Western Bartonshire local authority at the time. Um, and out of conversations around a hook, something to pin this idea on. Um, Matthew and Scott Ambler and Etta Murphy uh, sat around and just bounced some ideas around about what they thought would work in terms of creating um, a something, some kind of live performance. And eventually there were all sorts of ideas that came and went, but actually Lord of the Flies was the one thing that kind of stuck. Um, for obvious reasons, because it's a book uh, by William Golding about a group of boys who are marooned on an island and what happens when they're left to their own devices. Brilliant. So that's where it came from. Yeah, thank you, Ellen. I saw the production in Glasgow in 2011, and I think, um, and I think James, you saw it too, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Alex, did you see it in 2011, or were you you came on board with the ambassadors? Um, and I think certainly I remember seeing it and just being overwhelmed by this amazing mix of professional dancers and this raw energy of these young boys, some of whom had never stepped foot on stage and just, and just thinking this project, this is not the end of this project. Um, and I really think that sort of was across, certainly those of us who were uh, you know, involved in your ventures and part of that and, and the audience as well. Um, so from that point in 2011 and, and having this moment, and we'll come back to sort of some highlights of that project, um, 
James, what, what sort of inspired, what was the journey then from, and Helen, what was the journey from 2011 to 2014 when it went on a 13, 13 venue tour <laughs> with 8,000 young boys? I was, um, I was trying to remember this morning, I started to think, how many venues was it? And then I, rem and then in a second, I thought of the, I knew it was the number 13 and, um, and so, well, to answer the way, the best way to answer your question, I joined New Adventures and Reborn in 2012. And um, not long after I joined, Arts Council England established a new um, fund called Strategic Touring, which was all about um, placing audiences and participation at the heart of touring. And I think Helen and I read the guidance and immediately knew that it was um that lord of the flies was kind of written across every single sentence in that um in the, the guidance for that funding and so we started to explore whether or not we could um, apply for funding and i remember a moment quite early on in the budgeting process where we knew that we would be able to make the tour viable if we could find six venues to um who wanted it and um, then there was a period of a week or so where I just got on the phone um, with Robert Noble um, to talk to venues about their um, willingness to take the show. And um, what happened was that we turned into this 13 <laughs> venue tour with absolutely no sense of what that would mean. <laughs> in that when it came to production and how much work it was gonna be and we were just delighted that there were so many venues um who wanted to go on this incredible journey with us um but yeah that number 13 is imprinted on my brain because by the second the tour was in two parts and um we were such a tiny team it was just myself and helen and, and we basically lived on the road didn't we house for mm -hmm. A, a, over a year, a year and a half really, um, with very little time in the beds that we knew to be our own and a lot of time <laughs> in towns and city, cities across the whole of the UK and whilst it was um, overwhelmingly exhausting, it is still without doubt like the highlight of my career. It was the most fun I've ever had professionally and um, doubt that that will be to, you know that it will happen again yeah yeah I totally agree I mean it's just and for you know for you to start imaging by saying that there are five boys who are in new adventures you know company is you know we had those conversations you know all the way through planning the revival of Lord of the Flies and I would say actually even at the beginning it was it was that that thing of germinating and yeah. you know, finding a mechanism to give young people, young boys particularly, an opportunity to get into the profession and particularly boys who might not think about doing that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was just the most extraordinary journey. Extraordinary. Yeah, I think that's it. I think and it'd be great to hear from you in a moment, Alex, around sort of being on the ground as well. I, I remember coming and visiting uh, you, uh, James and Helen at the Lowry. And you sort of we walk backstage and kind of opened up your the company office, which was your sort of you know move from city to city and, and rehome that. And I remember just feeling there's this amazing sense of community and this sort of once a really unique project that I think will absolutely has has impacted every single person who who took part in it on whatever level. I know the professional dancers who who were in the company um, still talk about it as one of the highlights of their mm. career. And we've had a Q and A uh, with them as well this week talking and reflecting on the project which I'm, I'm sure will be oh, definitely yeah. worth to watch. Um, so yeah I, I think that's true I mean it's interesting the number 13 um, our Romeo and Juliet tour from last last year had 13 venues as well so there must be some ah. number 13 uh, which must not must always be. unlucky not always unlucky not for us um, so I think it is an amazing project. I think the legacy of that is something that you can hope for, but it's a real, it's a real testament to the thought and the, the, the world that was created and the training and the support that those young boys were given, that they were encouraged to, not all of them, and not all of them will go into training, and, and, 
but that impact and that choice that some of those boys have made to train and eventually join the company. And we, we're, we're, doing, we're creating a film with them as well about those five, about that journey they've gone on from Lord of the Flies into the, the company. And so that would be one to watch. Um, so just from your perspective, Alex, as a sort of local, um, you know, as an ambassador for Theatre for Plymouth, coming in, you know, not as part of the core of New Adventures originally, but coming in to represent New Adventures and to recruit those young boys. What was that experience like for you? Um, I think something that New Adventures did really well, and I should say that I was one of 23, I think, ambassadors. So in each venue uh, of the 13, there were two ambassadors. So I'm speaking on behalf of lots and lots of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so yesterday I did a little text round to get some kind of thoughts from them all about what the impact was on them and what the experience was. But I think something the New Adventures did really well that's really tricky as a community dance artist when you're working for a company is help us to embed in, in the artistry of the work and understand kind of the artistic vision um, of Matthew Bourne and of New Adventures. So I think we were really fortunate in that sense. There was a really invested period of bringing us inside what is kind of like a family. Um, so professionally, we had that time to sort of um, incubate and understand the project. Um, I think when you work in the community if you are doing your job right the core of what you do is um, about people and I think um, for me what was really special about this project is sometimes it's really hard to find authentic projects that marry quality and people so really about people and about developing people and communities and investing in what communities need without compromising on artistic quality um, I think that project, um, the response I got when I asked the other ambassadors what, you know, what were the career highlights for you that you can relate back, um, more than one said the last seven years of my career, you know, I can relate it all back um, because it gave me an opportunity to kind of uh, fit the pieces of the puzzle together that never felt like they could fit. Mm. Um, there's just something really special about that. Um, and. A lot of us train, you know, we train professionally at Conservatoires. We were looking for that opportunity to use those skills um, and work in, work in the areas that a lot of us grew up in. You know, these are the areas that a lot of us kind of went to school in. Um, so I think that was what was really beautiful about that project. It was about reinvesting in where we came from. And I think um, just to that point as well, I remember, I mean, it's also fair to, to acknowledge and to kind of be honest about that so much about that 2014 project some of the biggest successes about it were just accidents you know and you know we wrote the strategic touring fund application and you know we had to think it forced us to think about how we would meaningfully engage with local communities across across england and the wider uk and the truth was that new adventures whilst it it toured so extensively it didn't have those deep community relationships that we knew were going to be so vital and so in the you know outflowed into the application that we would we would recruit a community of um, locally based dance artists to mm. find the the young people and it wasn't until we actually you know we got the we got the funding and, and we then started to write the project that we realized that this group of people were going to be so absolutely critical to the success of the project and that challenged us at New Adventures in all sorts of ways that in New Adventures hadn't been challenged before because rightly Matt and Etta and Scott are so protective about the the choreography and the movement language of the company and there was Helen and I asking them to to trust this body of young people that they didn't have relationships with relationships with across the UK and and like everything Alex was just saying was reminding me that at every level of this project and one of the reasons I think it's so it was so successful and I, I hope it will be again in the future is that the stakes are so high at every single level and the trust that is required is huge so the um, so from the young people the trust is the expectation is massive um, our expectation and trust in the ambassadors was massive. Uh, Matt, as, Matt and Etta's expectation and trust of Helen and I was massive. And at every level, I think it's probably fair to say we were all a little bit out of our depth. And that is what made it extraordinary. But that's when you make amazing art, isn't it? Mm. Is, is when the stakes are high and mm. the risks are big. I mean, it was, you know, it was a risk in terms of quality 
it was a risk in terms of finance, in terms of filling those theatres with, you know, with because with, there's such an expectation when people go and see Matthew Bourne's work of, of what that is and the quality of that production and the dance and the storytelling and the set, you know, all of those things combined. There's such a huge expectation. So for them creatively and reputationally to take that risk was enormous. Yeah. Enormous. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. And I think to bring those, you know, that, that gr any group of young untrained dancers. And we and just I carried have... that around for three years. Oh, <laughs> like, you know, we have to say, you know, Scott's choreography was, was sublime mm. in its ability to allow a, a, a young boy who's never danced to make it look seamless next to somebody who's trained and has been with New Adventures for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for audiences not actually to be able to tell the difference. I, I mean, think, it I think that's absolutely right. I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing has been for that moment of investing, of going, of taking that work, which was so exposing. And I think that risk level, but exposing and say, we're not going to, we're going to place that work in the, in the, in the, with the biggest audience we possibly can, with the biggest amount of exposure onto those large scale venues, um, on those stages, and we are going to believe in what's being created. And I think that is a huge statement. And I think that's something that I, we refer back to a lot through with Romeo and Juliet as well. It was a, a similar thing in, in terms yeah. of it was a slightly different age and a slightly different type of dancer and the numbers were different, but that, that belief that there is talent and, and the, the power of dance in connecting um, and bringing people together, I think, co completely was, is epitomised in Lord of the Flies. And I think mm -hmm. when the audiences bought those tickets and they came out going, that was amazing, without us having to apologise or say... Or explain. Or explain, absolutely. I think that's something that you realise yeah. you've, you've done good. Um, and I think that's the good. other thing that my dad is also just in terms of what James, you were saying is, you know, is the legacy element mm. of, of the project, which is, you know, it's almost invisible. It's not invisible because we know that it's there and it's, you know, it's existed beyond, but that, it's that thing of not parachuting in and then just leaving again. It was, it was placing something within those cities, um, that, that remained and still remains and is still ongoing, you know, all these years later. And it's what you were saying, Alex, about being rooted in those communities, that there was a huge investment for you guys. Exactly. And I think, Alex, and I mean, you sort of texted out the ambassadors. I think, one, I mean, it's great that you've all got that connection still. And I'm sure that network is, is carried on strengthening as well. Was there anything else that came up that particularly sort of struck you in terms of what those ambassadors were taking with them beyond the project? There's something about confidence, there's something about somebody saying, yes, you're under 24, uh, yes, you've never done anything like this before, but yes, we know that you know what, you can, what you're doing, um, and have that kind of faith instilled in us. I think for people's confidence, that's such a massive springboard when you've come out of training and you're looking for kind of what your career's going to be. It's such a competitive and unknown industry to find that kind of, that place where someone will invest in you and believe in the skills that you've already got and develop them. I think we all felt that, um, but there's something really special that stands out. It's just the, and I, this is a, a value of New Adventures, the family thing that New Adventures talk about all the time. And it's one of our core values. We are, the ambassador network has remained a family um, of really close friends. And I think to have that professionally and in terms of friendship when you work in this industry is so important. Um, so yeah, to be able to have, you know, I've got a little WhatsApp group of all of them for, when I have questions about just work questions, um, work and baking, but mostly work. Um, so yeah, I think that's really, really important. They, I mean, in terms of legacy, what Helen was saying, there are a number of them that who, who have run projects off the back of Lord of the Flies. There are a number of dance companies across the country that began with the boys who were on stage for Lord of the Flies and now have reached hundreds more. So I think that's a really kind of tangible thing that can easily be evidenced in terms of their careers, but also the legacy of the project. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that the legacy, I think for us has been, it is, it is the show that keeps on giving in the sense that, you know, even the projects we run, um, Swan School is a talent development project we run and we had, we've had Lord of the Flies alumni uh, in those. Um, and even in our Romeo and Juliet young cast, we had um, 
young, a lot of the Flyers uh, alumni in that as well. So I think we can sort of really see throughout the work that we do and, and the talent development work that we can still see them all popping up at different ages. And they were such different ages, weren't they? I think, is, is that right? I, was it yeah. eight? Yeah. What were the eight? Nine, the youngest? I think the, nine, the youngest was nine, yeah. Um, and, like, and, you know, the other thing that, again, like, that felt like a, just an accidental privilege all the way through the project was was the dynamic that existed between those young people and then the professional dancers and how that would develop over over just in a, a two-week period you know we were taking young people whose experience of being around other young people was predominantly in a school setting and throwing them into an environment where you know it was so different from school and um they were getting to hang out with if they were 9 10 or 11 with 14 15 16 year olds and if you were 14, 15, or 16, you were getting to hang out with 23, 24, 25 year old um, dancers who, and that kind of all the way, all the way through the project, the, the importance of those relationships and that mentoring um, and that, oh my goodness, I want to be like you, just mm -hmm. became such a huge part of, um, of, of why the project was so successful. And it, you know, we knew very early on. At the, well at the Lowry you know we Helen and I used to dread the Saturday evening goodbye at every <laughs> venue because um it was highly emotional every week um because you'd yeah you'd given this ex absolutely extraordinary opportunity to a group of of young people and the, the reality was we had to pack up the lorries and the flight cases and um move on and do it and start it all over again and um but yeah that the um those goodbyes not just with young people but also parents that in the space of two weeks Absolutely. that you built amazing relationships with there were i you know i can think about lots and lots of boys over the course of that year but I can also picture the faces of loads of parents that I met and proud grandmas and yeah it was amazing You're my favorite for uh, kind of emotional reasons really but just sort of encapsulated and funnily enough it was a family from one of the boys in the Inverness from the Eden Court show and uh, they came every day every day mm -hmm. uh, saw every show and their little boy I think he was about 11 or 12 and he'd been very, very um, reserved, quiet, withdrawn um, for, you know, whatever reasons. And I remember them saying to me on the last night, on the, on the dreaded Saturday when we were going to pack everything up. And they literally said, you know, thank you for giving our son back to us because he's just completely come out of his shell. Mm -hmm. And he's communicating again and his teachers are saying that his work in school is you know, was improving and it was just, you know, I'm, I've gone goose bumply. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the most, it's why you do it. Mm -hmm. It's why, why you do it. Mm -hmm. I think some of the biggest risks that were taken in terms of the boys that were on the project and, and were in the show mm -hmm. were the biggest success stories. Um, but probably the scariest moments, you know, when we knew what a risk it was for, for them as individuals uh, to ask their families to get, you know, to be on board. Um, the biggest risks were definitely the big, biggest success stories. Definitely. Off, off on the way, isn't it? That's why we take, as you say, that's why we take those risks and you invest. And if you're, if you're putting your faith into someone and saying, we believe in you, then it's much easier for them to give that back. And I think that's, that, those are the sort of similar stories I've heard coming out of Lord of the Flies, the ones where it's actually gone, come into this family, come into this place and, and let, find yourself and you're safe and you can explore and you can be scared, but we're going to have all these different ages. I think that thing that James says about that mentoring and that the older dancers and the younger boys and those connections, I think are, are so unique and so important to, to enable people to find their place within it um, and, to, and confidence as well absolutely and that's some, something about the that's what another reason the project i think was so successful was that the choreography and the and the journey through this the novel and and the way that scott made the piece enabled um 
us and the resident directors and the ambassadors to the the space to take the risk on young on boys and young men who perhaps weren't as artistically capable as some of their peers because we knew all through the piece that there would be moments where we could create the space for those boys to be on stage and they just needed to nail that first six minutes um and my goodness that often took so much more time in different cities than it did in others but that you know that you know that those opening moments of the show were so critical to setting the expectation um and the tone for the audience and and yeah off beyond that point there were all sorts of places both to kind of allow talent to come really far down stage and expose it and other places where talent um and skill was able to be a bit more hidden and that was again just an amazing thing that we had in our power really but it's it was also the perfect vehicle i mean in terms of you know matthew bourne's work and new adventures work it's because it's storytelling Mm. And those, you know, those dancers on stage are characters and each of those children, you know, young people, each of those young boys involved had a character name and a backstory and a reason for being on stage and a relationship with, with the other people in their cast in each city. So there was an integrity to that, I think, which is true throughout, you know, New Adventures work mm -hmm. and, and should, should be no different for, you know, for anything that goes, you know, that comes after new, you know, after Lord of the Flies, it was it was so instrumental. Yeah, I think that integrity as well. I think that absolutely informed informed Roman Juliet as a sort of as a mm. as a production that was trying to sort of recognise what was achieved with Lord of the Flies with the the younger. Um, the younger boys and, and those who hadn't experienced dance, and to go actually, what about those ones who are who are talented and aren't you know, what's the next phase and, and how do we find a story that fits with what they might need and that story of youth and that challenge of, you know, I think that the themes within both those shows of both Lord of the Flies and Romeo and Juliet for young people is a sort of really amazing way for them to access and, and deal with a huge amount of emotions and, 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 and let them know that it's okay to feel those emotions and, and express those through, through the project and through dance. Um, Absolutely. I mean, you, you slightly, you, one of my questions was going to be for each of you is what was, can you sort of talk about one particular highlight of the, of the project? Helen, I don't know if you've got another one in addition to the one you, you just talked about is, or a particular, particular moment that defines it for you. I think, I mean, there's a no, I mean, you know, the opening at the Lowry will remain with me forever. Um, just because it was, you know, on that grander scale. I mean, you know, the the, the performances that we did in 2011 at, at Glasgow were phenomenal, but for, you know, in an almost kind of innocent way of not mm. really knowing, you know, whether this thing would, would live and breathe again. And, you know, everybody involved in that production were phenomenal. But I don't know. I do, the one thing, it's funny, you know, Jane sort of just mentioning that that opening sequence of the show. I, I hear that music and I'm, I'm absolutely, <laughs> I, I will weep with, you know, it's just, there's something about Terry Davis's music and that particular sequence of movement when you see those boys and, you know, yeah. in their uniforms, um, I, I just, just sends me, I go. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty amazing start to, a, to the show. Mm. What about you, Alex? Yeah. I'm really hard to think of stories that doesn't don't mean I'm gonna to have to talk about individuals because they will watch this and they will know I'm talking about them um, I think for me um, it was the long way around this is that I went to a school in Plymouth that isn't the most affluent area it doesn't have the biggest income in terms of support for, for the education there um, and we did workshops there you know these workshops happened all over the country in places like football stadiums and Prince's Trust halls and things like that so these these boys were coming from all over um, and there were some boys in that school that I went to that I really wanted to see succeed for this project but it felt you know as we were saying it felt impossible it felt like this is so much to ask of them um, anyway we had our audition and some of them were in 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 our cast I think the moment for me was when we went to Manchester to see 
uh, the, the show there. I think it was the first on the tour. Um, and as the curtain went up, that music came on and the first six minutes played. It was just those particular boys from that school that I thought, this is going to be them. And that's, and I did, I did a cry, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking, you know, what feels impossible, kind of this massive tour with all of these professional dancers is completely possible. It's just about, I think it's the time and the investment that we were able to give. Um, and they're going to watch this because <laughs> they know well, I wasn't <laughs> Um, amazing and you James gosh I, I, I mean I've got a f I've got a f so uh, so many but it's and it's really hard to to think of one but um like I guess my top three um like taking the show home to theatre Plymouth I, I grew up in Plymouth as well and that venue just holds a really big part of my heart because I was in youth theatre there and um and so to be presenting a stage on the main stage at the Theatre of Plymouth was hugely, hugely special for me. And um, in Plymouth, we'd found the incredible um, ambassadors in Alex and Marillo, and we'd uh, we totally trusted them, and we built a great personal and professional friendship with with them. And um, and they'd found an extraordinary company of young men. So Plymouth is really special. Um, just because, you know, I don't like to do things by half. Through 2014, I was also going through the adoption process. And I, um, I was in Aberdeen when I got word about what, who is now my eldest son. Um, Helen will remember that very vividly. So I remember everything about being in Aberdeen and auditioning the young boys in Aberdeen because I was carrying around this other huge kind of personal weight. Um, I'll never forget going on sale for Sadler's Wells because it basically sold out and, and it like completely terrified Matt and because it just felt like such a huge and expectation. Been another, product, another performance. We had to add a show and all the pressure around Sadler's Wells felt huge. Mm. Um, yeah. And then in 2017, presenting Lord of the Flies in Melbourne um, wow. and yeah. that, that being an amazing thing to make to make happen as well so um yeah they're probably in my top four can i do one more <laughs> yeah of course there was a wonder i think oh god i can't now remember where we were i think we were in norwich and there was another cast and i got a feeling it was anyway one of the cast came to see the other cast and there was there was just you could watch you know that when the chant there's a chanting section in the show and you know you, you we were just watching this entire sort of you know young cast who were reliving it in the audience it was just an art together it was just it was wonderful it's just wonderful such great sense of ownership of that of that performance and that production for them is just, you know, it's life changing. Whatever it is that they go on to do, you know, dance or the arts or, you know, accountant or whatever, you know. But yeah, it was, uh, it was really spectacular just watching that conversation happen because they both knew the show so well. Yeah, I think, I think one thing I always really enjoy is watching the audience Mm. I remember when I went, I can't remember, I've seen Lord of the Flies a few times, but I remember seeing, I sat around, I could tell I was sat near some parents of some of the, you know, one of the boys on stage and watching their reactions. And that gets me because you just see these, you know, parents and friends suddenly realizing that their son has this, you know, what they've achieved, particularly if they've gone on trickier journeys and they or, and it's been a bigger risk and there's been more investment from everyone and to then see what they're capable of i just feel like there's that moment not only for the performer and their experience but the, but the experience of their family and, and and what that means in that relationship and the sort of awe and respect and love and devotion and and just amazing you know you just feel it emanating from everything and that's Absolutely. I always love watching that. That first um, remind oh, James, of, of James, of your little speech at the. That's what I was just about to say. I was just, I was just going to say that um, <laughs> on week at the first venue at the Lowry, 
um, I came out after the show and we would always do a reception for parents and young people and it was always just such a joyous thing to do every Tuesday it was just however knackered we were like that was just so special and I really I, I just was chatting to a mum and the first thing I said was did you enjoy the show and the first thing that came out of her mouth was I've got no idea I didn't watch it I only watched my son <laughs> And um, so I then used to sort of in my speech each every other week, I used to say, please come back tomorrow and watch the show, because I know that all you've done on the first night is just watch your boy. And uh, as a parent now, like, I totally get it. You know, if, if your kid was up there, like you're not going to actually watch the show for the first time. You're just going to follow him around the stage. <laughs> Well, it's, like, it's, like the Chris, it's like the Christmas concerts where you take your video and it, all it is is just your child and you're like, was it good? I have no idea. What was my child doing? Yeah, totally guilty. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. And I think there's, I think on so many levels, it, it has had such a huge legacy and such a huge impact on, on everyone who not only took part in the workshop, because obviously the project wasn't just about those who ended up performing on stage. It was about all these workshops that went on across the country so it was around 8,000 wasn't it that, mm. that took part in workshops and you know I think obviously there was sort of around 24 on stage but depending slightly on each venue but to have that num sheer number touched or engaged in some way was was amazing and I think everyone from that point even all the way through to performing on stage to the ambassadors to those who you know all the staff all the creative team because it was a it was the top-notch creative team as well, you know. It wasn't. It was, it was all of Matt's yeah. collaborators and Scott and, um, you know, absolutely the the, the A team um, doing the work and creating this amazing show. And I think that also means you go, we're taking this seriously. This is this isn't just a project on the side. This is a real, genuine uh, project we're all invested in. And I think. For, even now you know everyone talks about it as something that has truly affected them and impacted on them so it's um it's really nice to hear some of those these stories and I, I i actually reflect i reflect back in um on it now like with the benefit of hindsight and just feel immensely grateful to to matt and to etta and to and to and to scott and to les and um for their willingness to give it a go and i and I think because ultimately the show delivered on so many levels, it's really extraordinary and humbling now to, to think that the success of that project has, has set the company on a path that, you know, is now in such sort of safe hands with all of you now sort of doing what you're doing and, and, and helping it to grow. And um, it was, I must say, it was like such a treat to come and watch Romeo and Juliet Purely <laughs> someone in the audience. It was. And, I, I felt and, that too. And just it, that felt like such a huge treat to not feel any of the pressure of being even remotely responsible for it. And um, <laughs> uh, but also to sit there knowing that that was built on the on the foundations that that was Lord of the Flies in some way. Um, but I don't underestimate. F yeah, that the risk that Matt as an artist. And Etta and Scott, you know, it was it was so huge. And I did, I definitely didn't um, feel like appreciate that at the time, but I, I really recognise it now for sure. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, and I think I think you're right about it. The fact that it's informed so much of what we do now. I think Alex will hopefully agree with me in this. In the in in all the projects we start and look at how we're going into I think there's a huge amount of what we know we can achieve because we, it was achieved with Lord of the Flies where taking the biggest risk has the biggest rewards and going for those people who are the hardest to reach and bringing them in are the things that we sort of seek out to go we know the impact dance and having a project you know working with new adventures and, and working in the way where that investment with storytelling and characters and a belief in anything is possible almost that ambition i think hopefully is something that we we try and make sure uh is is sort of in every project and everything that we we look to do um and sort of to continue that legacy and to carry on sort of taking those those younger boys who who some of those younger ones won't even be ready to start training yet i don't think is that right yeah i'm trying to work out the years now so if they were nine no in college i think college so but we're going to be doing a big old 
where are you now? <laughs> oh, that would be, ama be amazing. That would be amazing. Forest. Amazing. We wanted to plant the trees. Do you remember the forest? We wanted to plant trees. I wonder if that oh, would have right. Who knows? The plant a tree for for every for every one of the cast members. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And there'll be, I just, I just often think that now running a, now running a theatre and having touring shows coming through every week, just that I have since I've been here for two years, there have been, you know, members of um, like touring companies that have had boys from Lord of the Flies, which yeah. is amazing. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you, all three of you, so much for sharing some of your memories and highlights of what was an amazing project. And I, I certainly know that we all, we all want to do it again. So we're just uh, finding the right time and, and how we might make that happen. But um, thank you so much to James. Thank you so much to Helen. And thank you so much to Alex. It's been great talking to you and um, speak to you soon. <laughs>